A little over a month ago, I gave you guys the first look at our upcoming LAN Gaming Center slash Badminton Center, and I have some really exciting progress updates to share with you guys. Check it out! The server room is now one Dan wider. So Dan, here, 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 show the people. Stack it, stack it. I am a server rack. Look at me being a server rack, and watch this. Wow, Dan can go all the way around. This, um, this really would have sucked. Let's show them what it would have looked like before. Here's me, a server rack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a real problem. <laughs> Enough about that though, let's talk about what we're gonna put in it. Starting with, ah uh, yes, Ubiquiti's UDM Pro. We're gonna have one of these for... Actually, we're gonna have two of these. Oh God, Jake's so... not getting redundant internet again, is he? I, I don't know, I hope not. I, that's probably two lines. Sure, so uh... we're gonna have two because... They're gonna be bonded together so that we have redundancy and failover. I mean, we're gonna have 300 people here, so... You know, we kind of don't want it to fail, right? That's fair enough. Yeah. And speaking of things we don't want to fail, oh our God. security system. Yeah. We're gonna have how many of these 48 port PoE switches? We're gonna have 10 of these just to deal with all of the PoE that's going everywhere. Cause remember that every single door needs like two of these. And every then access point. Every oh access my God, point. the speakers. Dozens of cameras. <laughs> Everything. And, sorry Dan, That's okay. we're gonna have, I think it's two of these Enterprise XG 10 gig switches with 25 gig uplinks. So yeah, I believe these will be our aggregation between the downstairs and up here. And then on top of that, we're also gonna have another two of these, but instead of ethernet, they're laid out with SFP ports, which means that we can do 10 gig everywhere. This is so overkill. Okay. So much more to show you guys, and this video is brought to you by Narwhal, featuring their Frio X Ultra, a combination robot vacuum and mop that will leave your floors looking spotless without you having to lift a finger. And look at that, it's got edge detection. These trenches were here before, but what's new is now they have the conduit that is going to house Power and Cat 6, and now <laughs> these openings are much larger, which was a costly expense, thankfully not for us, mm. because they underestimated the size of these boxes. And the reason I bet Mr. Daniel Besser knows is because power and networking don't mix. Don't mix, and the boxes needed to be bigger. <laughs> Why even? These are the ones I'm actually way more excited about. Each of these is gonna have Cat6 and an armored six strand fiber. Uh oh. Actually, those are just duplex receptacles, but Dan's still right. Oh, We're God. going to be using this same style of conduit. In fact, you can see all of it is run up in the ceiling to run power, Cat6, and fiber for every one of these rows of tables. That is so overkill. You wanted it. Come on, man. We'll talk about that in a minute. First, let's have a look at that fiber. Dan assures me that this is armored, so I can just go to town with this. I'm, ki I'm kidding, I'm, <laughs> I just love seeing the look on his face. I know what you're like. I'll be careful. That's fine. So just relax, Dan. I uh, can tell he's gonna, not relaxed. We're gonna cut it. Fiber doesn't need to be this thick. Well, it's as easy to run six as it is one. Ah, so we've got six strands in here, even though we will be using two. <laughs> but that's for redundancy? Yeah, well, I mean, they're going to be public in there, and if they get kicked or damaged or broken, then we can just keep terminating them instead of having to pull new stuff, right? For now, why don't we just take a look at the inner guts? Can you... Yeah, yeah. sure. If I can cut through it. The nice thing about having the armored fiber as well, as you can see, it's like corrugated tube. It really protects it from that minimum bend radius as well. It makes it really difficult to kind of go past that. Mm -hmm. uh, and because this is the, uh, the nice stuff, it's pretty flexible too. Uh, okay, which cut, yep. cut okay. away from yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Dan. It's good stuff. Oh, yeah, there yeah okay, I've oh. seen people do this. Hey, there we go. Right. We have our plastic sheath on the outside, which mm -hmm. kind of protects this from scratching other things. Mm -hmm. Then we have our armor, which is this nice corrugated metal, really, really tough. Then we have our inner layer, which is kind of the actual fiber part. You can see it kind of moves around in there. Mm -hmm. There's a really tough plastic sheath on top of that as well. And then we have our pull cord. So this right. wraps around the entire thing. Yeah, and you can and really heave on that. Yeah, you can really heave on that. When you get pre-made ones, they tie it off to a big eye and then you can, you can give her. And then inside we have our six fibers. Beautiful. And these, these can go up to, I believe it's 24 or 48. And again, it's the same size no matter what you get. So it's just as easy to do six as it is one. And because it's glass and not copper, it's not really that much more expensive. Doing this in copper would be like two or three times the price. Right. Speaking of copper, we also have all of our ethernet. All right, let's go look at it. Two or three times the price. Oh, on our way, this is fun. Bonding adhesive. Um, and that is for this guy right here. Dan, mm -hmm. did you notice that uh, 
Still pretty bad? Yeah. This yeah. <laughs> is all of the spray-on acoustic treatment that is going to do the ceilings of both sides, meaning that when you're on a cord or at a land party, you're gonna be able to actually talk to each other over a distance without it just turning into a bunch of standing wave garbage. This right here is pretty much your bog standard Cat 6A solid twisted pair. Okay, it always blows my mind how much of the stuff you end up putting into an installation like this. It's really, really hard to make sure that all the runs are done. Now, to be fair, because I think I'm getting called out right here, there was still 90 runs that I had to do, uh, and then we oh, changed it all. No, it's not you. No? No, 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 I, no, this is everyone. Oh, because, I thought you were calling me out because no, no. I ordered like 2,000 boxes of this stuff and then only used four. It's a very real concern when you're running Ethernet cable because while you could take that half box and it'll probably make it, if you waste the time of running it and you're two feet short, that costs so much more than just grabbing another box and making sure that you definitely have enough. These all came from Phantom Cables. And what is the total damage? We got 40, so we have 40,000 feet. 40,000 40, feet. 40,000 feet. Can you imagine coming from that end of the court all the way back to the server room over there? Yeah, it's a lot of feet. And then there's two and everything there, and then there's gonna be APs and speakers in the ceiling, and then it's a lot of runs. I hope we're gonna have enough. Dan's gonna have all the runs. All of them. They're mine. I did have food poisoning last week. <laughs> I did not tell him to do that. We're gonna talk about the paint splotches and we're gonna check in with Chase, who's working on a proof of concept for our giant screen gaming setup that we're gonna have here. But first, we need to check in with Adam. Oh, don't mind me. I'm just here filming our sponsor, Narwhal. We brought the Frio X Ultra here to the Badminton slash Land Center to see how capable it is in an absolute worst case scenario. And I gotta say, while initially we had some concerns based on that it took about an hour to map out the room, in fairness to it, this room is a disaster area. It did do it and it actually looks very accurate. And we set it a zone to vacuum and then mop. Not only did it figure it out, get it pretty clean, it has dirt detection, so it went back to its base station, wrung itself out, and it is now doing a second pass. I mean, I think the before and after kind of speaks for itself here, guys. The Frio Ultra X is equipped with 8,200 pascals of suction power that will make easy work of any large debris, and thanks to the cone-shaped spiral rubber heads and 50-degree tilted bristles on the zero-tangling floating brush, the Frio X Ultra has an SGS-certified 0% hair tangling rate. The dual spinning mops are made of microfiber to better absorb stubborn stains without scratching your floors, and uh, <laughs> I think the performance of them really does speak for itself. The all-in-one station where the Frio parks includes water exchange for both dumping dirty water and giving it fresh clean water, auto drying for the mop's heads, auto detergent filling, self-cleaning of those mop heads, which uses the same AI dirt sense feature that is the reason that it's doing a second pass on the floor. Super cool, so it makes sure the heads are cleaned and checked during the cleaning process using multiple sensors. And while the docking station doesn't have a container for dust, you don't need to worry about emptying your vacuums bin all the time, thanks to a special dust processing solution that compacts the dust in your bin so you can fit more in without clogging. And it does this at a surprisingly mild 71 decibels. Now to answer your pressing questions about the paint. Chase, this is why we couldn't use this wall for our projector setup, because we had to do one billion paint swatches to determine the optimal color for the walls in here. We needed something that hopefully wouldn't impact the cast of the light too much, but we needed something that was high contrast enough that you'd be able to easily track a moving object against it. So what do you guys think? What's your favorite color? What do we go with? I like uh, BWF blue. I think we should go with Toronto blue. Thank you. The decision is already made. Oh. And it's neither of those. It's gonna be this one. What, that blue doesn't even have a name. BWF Blue, when we mocked it up, and I think he used Maya, it looks like Cartoon Land. Uh, yeah, it's, so it's a lot. You want a serious blue for a serious sport. Yeah, and serious gaming. Absolutely, I guess. Speaking that. of serious gaming, we have the projector set up. Let's go have a look. Projector gaming corner. The point is, last time we did an update, Chase gave you guys an okay idea of what the console gaming corner is going to look like but we've got a more detailed view or 
that's what we're trying to figure out. That's what we're trying to figure out today. So we actually have the projectors, we have the screens, we don't really have the best equipment, as you can tell, but uh, we're going to get there. This is a quality inflatable couch. I mean, it's going to store so small. <laughs> we really need that storage space. Linus happily kept that for like a month. <laughs> I don't know if I was that happy about it. <laughs> For our projector, we've gone with the Epson LS12000B, which was recently liberated from my theater room when I replaced it with the world's largest television. It's not a commercial projector by any stretch of the imagination, but for a residential projector, it's pretty darn bright, it's laser, so it offers excellent contrast, and it is 4K 120 hertz, which, uh, makes it fantastic for gaming. I just misaligned it, didn't I? Probably, yeah. <laughs> I think we're gonna have to give some thought to our mounting mechanism for this. If you guys, if you guys move the couch... Then we can it'll just go between us, yeah. So during the actual LAN, we're gonna have a much taller projector cart. That way it doesn't actually... No one's head is gonna get in the way. Plus we're gonna have it mounted to the wall using the typical mounting system. So what we'll be able to do is just get it a little bit higher so it won't interfere with anyone. So it should be good. Kinda looks like ass. But I have an idea. Why do we have printer paper here? I don't know, I was gonna ask you. I think we were using it as a mouse pad. Oh, well why did you ask me why we have it then? I don't know. All right, hit it boys! Hey, that's more like it, man. Okay, biggest TV, a little better. This, pretty freaking awesome still. All right, let's go. Oh God. Oh, I just naded everyone. Oh wow just killed two of our allies. The only real reason that we designed the projector gaming corner around a 120 inch screen is because we happened to already have one, the one that used to be in my theater room. But it's possible that if we just didn't use this screen, it might look fine anyway. And honestly, I'm not really convinced I see that much of a difference. Hey, do you mind hitting the lights? I mean, that's freaking awesome. Of course. Throw them back on for a second. That won't be the case once the walls in here are all blue. So what we've got to decide today, Chase, is do we need to invest in bigger projector screens? Should we do a quick test and see if we've got the lumens for it? Yeah, we'll give it a try. Okay, lights off again. Let's see how big we can make this. Adam, you ready? I mean, Chase, let's get this table out of here. Yeah, start, start rolling, Adam. Okay, whoa, whoa, hold on a second. You know what? That's pretty usable still. It is pitch black in here though. It is, but that's, I mean, it's gonna be pretty dark during a LAN. Okay, question for you. This is not a lot of nits, but with your eyes adjusted to the dark, is this usable at this size? This is like super usable, especially since the LAN is probably gonna be a similar darkness anyways. So I don't think it's that big of an issue. How many inches are we? Okay, what are we at? Uh. 195. 195 inch. I think we can go bigger. Let's go larger. I mean, you saw the size of this wall, right? While we're going bigger, we're also going to go with a bigger, badder gaming system. This is packing. Oh my God, is that a 4090? Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Well, we've got that. They want 4K gaming, huh? Oh, that is a solid double the area we had before. I got to say, guys, it's still kind of usable, isn't it? At this brightness, yeah. It definitely doesn't have enough brightness for convincing HDR at this size. Yeah, it's really, it, you can see it capping out with the highlights. It just like, everything's just kind of white as it can get it. But it's still pretty. Yeah, it's still pretty good looking. How big is this? Like 400 inches at this point? Probably about 300. It's not even completely dark in here. Like when we've got the ceiling black, which we will, you're gonna get less reflections. This like if we insane. wanna cast, you know, whatever's happening on, you know, main stage or whatever, you're gonna be able to see this from the entire facility. I'm not gonna lie, I was really, really skeptical of this projector's capabilities when you were like, oh, we'll just use our home projectors for the commercial space. I was like, it's not gonna work, but, uh... Laser. Yeah, I was wrong. Which doesn't mean that we can't amp it up a notch. I don't know if you guys noticed, but we kind of have two of them. Let's get Let's bright. go. Brighter and bigger. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try to go brighter by aligning the outputs from two projectors simultaneously. Without software and rigging, this kind of thing is honestly probably not gonna work, but hey, I, I wanna give it a shot. <laughs> Do we have this sitting on anything or like? I brought pizzas of paper. 
Oh, is that what the ream of paper is for? <laughs> yeah. Making fine adjustments, I see. Hey, there we go. Yo, this looks like that time I got drunk. <laughs> here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. <laughs> this is really bizarre. Oh, it looks like watching a 3D movie, but it don't have glasses on. Um, that actually is so weird. It does have like an actual 3D effect almost. If we were professionals and we were able to align this thing, it could be significantly brighter. I mean, that is yeah. a lot better. Maybe even HDR, but we are not professionals and that looks awful. And it's funny because this screen's so massive, but on this big wall, it doesn't really look that big. Oh, I think I see where you're going. Yeah. Ultra wide? That we can do. Let's do it. A scoot to the side. Oh, wow, okay. I mean, I guess when you have a 300 inch screen, you gotta move, you know, 300 inches to the right <laughs> before you can. Okay, I'm working on it. Of course, the point of this isn't to watch the same movie twice side by side, but rather to use NV Surround for ultra widescreen gaming. This is by far the largest screen that I have ever played Doom Eternal on. <laughs> Dude, this is surprisingly usable. Like it really still looks quite good. You know what I will say though, is I think this is about as big as we can go unless we could go brighter. Oh, do you want to try it? <laughs> yes, so absolutely. <laughs> I'm just sitting here hogging it. Here we go. You know what this makes me think though? This is a fraction of the size of this wall. What if we could have a screen the size of the entire wall? <laughs> that looks amazing. Okay, Holy okay. Shit. Now all that remains is to check in with our friends from Narwhal who sponsored this video. The Frio X had no issue mapping this room with those tri-laser sensors as well as its bumpers. And you can learn more about the Frio X Ultra at the link in the video description or by searching them up on Google or Amazon. And if you take advantage of our link below, you can get $300 off the Frio X Ultra. If you guys enjoyed this video, why not check out the world's largest TV? Okay, it's not as big as those projectors, but it's still pretty big. You can just sit closer.